Right, welcome to this video on joint classifications and joint types within the skeletal system. Uh, we're going to start off by talking about what the three main classifications of joint uh, are in the human body. Uh, and then we're going to focus in on one of them in particular. So the three main joint classifications. Uh, firstly, we have fibrous joints, fibrous joints, and they're sometimes uh, known as fixed joints. And you'll see why in a moment. Secondly, we have cartilaginous joints, cartilaginous, and they're slightly movable. Uh, and as you can tell from the name, something to do with cartilage. And then finally, the third classification of joint is a synovial or synovial uh, joint, a freely movable joint. And synovial or synovial relates to the fact that there's synovial fluid involved, um, which is important for lubrication of movement. So three classifications of joints, fibrous joints, cartilaginous joints and synovial joints. And then later in the video, we'll look um, in a bit more detail at synovial joints and we're going to note that there are six different types of synovial joints. So in terms of our uh, vocabulary here we're going to speak about classifications meaning fibrous, cartilaginous and synovial and then we're going to talk about types and that means uh, the versions, the different, the different kinds of synovial joint. Um, so the classification is synovial, there are six types of synovial joints which we'll get to shortly. Okay, so fibrous joints then, um, simply um, put, fibrous joints are held together by only a ligament. Um, and several good examples of this in the body. Um, there might be, for example, the sutures between the cranial flat bones. Um, and really, there's, there's almost no movement whatsoever uh, between bones that, are, that, are, uh, that have joints that are fibrous joints. Uh, a second example might be where the teeth are held to their bony sockets. Um, gomphoses uh, is the technical term for that and then another example would be uh, where the radio ulna uh, or the radius and the ulna meet and the tibia and the fibula meet the radio ulna and tibio fibula joints uh, syndesmoses um, they are called where they where they meet but there's no real movement uh, they're just two two separate bones meeting together and being held in place by a ligament and that's what a fibrous joint is a cartilaginous joint, um, as the name suggests, is a joint where the connection between the bones that are touching, um, and the technical word for touching bones is articulating bones, so where the connection between the articulating bones is made of cartilage. A great example of this would be the vertebrae in the spine. Um, another example between the manubrium and the sternum, part of the, uh, of the breastbone as it's commonly called, uh, and also at the front of um, the pubic bone, uh, the pubic symphysis, uh, where the two halves of the, of, the, uh, of the pelvis meet at the front of the pubic bone, uh, that's held together with a cartilaginous joint, where there is a little bit of movement, um, but not very much. So the third type of joint, and the, the one we're going to focus mostly on in this video, uh, is a synovial joint. A synovial joint and, uh, and I've just said that the type of joint what I meant to say was the third classification of joint uh, because as I've already said classification uh, means uh, fibrous cartilaginous synovial but type is the specific examples um, or categories of synovial joints so synovial joints are the most common classification of joint in the human body and there's there's four key features uh, that we need to know at this stage um, First off, synovial joints are highly movable joints, highly movable joints, and therefore predominantly you'll find synovial joints uh, in the appendicular skeleton, because that's the part of the skeleton uh, primarily concerned with allowing us to move. Second key feature is that uh, normally around a synovial joint you will have a synovial capsule, a capsule, so uh, that will surround the entirety of the joint and essentially uh, create a space around the joint into which synovial fluid um, can be leaked, uh, can be secreted. Without that synovial fluid then flowing off somewhere else uh, down into the muscles or whatever. So the synovial capsule keeps the synovial fluid in the right place. And part of that, or just inside the synovial capsule, is what's known as the synovial membrane. So that's kind of the sheath or the outside part, just inside, uh, making up the, the edges of the capsule, if you like, 
and the synovial membrane is going to be responsible for secreting synovial fluid into the synovial capsule and into uh, the kind of the nooks and crannies of the joint. Um, and as we warm up and as that synovial fluid becomes more fluid and, and less viscous, it will run into the gaps, into the, into the parts of the, of the joint that need to be lubricated. And, and it does that in order to reduce friction and damage caused as we exercise. So synov the synovial membrane secretes this synovial fluid into the synovial capsule, which then acts as a lubricant. Uh, as well as this, at the ends of the bones that articulate with one another, the ends of articulating bones, we have cartilage. Um, a specific type of cartilage, which is known as hyaline cartilage, or sometimes referred to as articular cartilage, pads the ends of the bones, particularly in long bones, there's a substantial amount of cartilage on the ends of the long bones, um, where the synovial fluid um, can kind of flow in and out of the, the pores or the porous structure of the hyaline cartilage to ensure that um, there's uh, as much friction reduction as possible and impact reduction as possible on the ends of the bones themselves. So those are four key features of synovial joints. Let's look at a diagram. So this diagram is, uh, isn't any joint in particular in the body. Uh, it's just meant to represent the common features of a synovial, uh, a synovial joint. So you can see we've got, uh, we've got two bones in the diagram at the top and at the bottom, uh, which are articulating. And on the ends of each of these bones, we have this articular or hyaline cartilage uh, in the gray color on the diagram. Then you can see the joint capsule. Um, surrounding the joint and, and making and creating that space centrally uh, inside the joint and then just inside the joint capsule as we've mentioned is the synovial membrane from which the synovial fluid uh, is secreted. That synovial fluid flows into the cavity that's created by the joint capsule and as I've said already as we warm up that fluid becomes less viscous and more runny and finds its way through the cracks and the gaps and into the cartilage and um, pads the ends of the bones and so on. So we've got synovial fluid inside that joint cavity. Outside of this, uh, this joint capsule then uh, we have sort of the muscular and the ligamental um, structures um, we've got the on the left hand side, we've got a muscle. Uh, just as an example, we've got a muscle here uh, that is going to be the muscle responsible for moving this joint. So the muscle itself um, eventually um, forms a tendon and then attaches to the to the lower bone that you can see on the diagram there. Um, the, the blue section you can see is what is known as a bursa and, and not all synovial joints will have or include a bursa but many of them will and the bursa essentially is a small fluid filled sac that sits between the joint capsule and the muscle and the purpose is really so that when the muscle contracts the bursa lifts the muscle and the tendon of the muscle away from the joint capsule so that it's not creating additional friction on the side of the joint capsule because we don't want to create friction on the joint capsule and, and damage it or certainly we don't want to burst it and lose synovial fluid because um, that's going to ultimately mean a damage to the to the articular cartilage further down the line. So the bursa lifts, it's this fluid filled sac that lifts the muscle and the tendon away from the joint capsule to, in order to reduce friction and then finally on the right hand side of the diagram um, you've got you've got an example of a ligament and there you can see whereas on the left the muscle uh, is there we've got muscle being joined to the bone uh, by a tendon on the right hand side we've got the bone linking straight to the bone and therefore that's um, known as a ligament and um, so the, the ligament is there essentially in a synovial joint to maintain a degree of joint stability uh, and joint alignment in movement. So that's a, that's a stylized, generalized version of a, of a synovial joint and the kind of the key features of a synovial joint. So finishing up then, let's talk about what the six types of synovial joint are. So I've said there's, um, there are three classifications fibrous, cartilaginous and synovial and then under the heading of synovial, under the classification of synovial, we've got six types of joint. Uh, and the first type of joint uh, that you'll need to know is a, uh, as a pivot joint, a synovial joint, a pivot joint. And a really good example of a pivot joint would be the atlas and the axis vertebrae, the top two vertebrae um, 
uh, at the top of the spine, uh, which, which fit together in order to allow rotational movement. So a pivot joint, the synovial joint, the pivot joint um, allows rotational movement. Um, and there'll be another video um, coming along uh, in which I describe uh, the different available movements at the various joints. Uh, but let's stick with just talking about the, the six joints for now. So we've got a pivot joint, and a good example of that will be at the top of the neck, the atlas and the axis vertebrae. The second type of synovial joint that you'll need to know is a ball and socket joint. And you've probably heard of this before, a ball and socket joint. And, and uh, the best known examples of these, of course, are the shoulder and the hip. Uh, where the, for example, in the shoulder, the, the, the proximal end of the humerus, so that's the end nearest to the midline of the body, is shaped pretty much like a ball and it slots into, uh, into a socket and is held in place uh, with ligaments and, and tendons and muscles and so on. Um, and a ball and socket joint is really useful um, for movement because it allows lots of different kinds of movements, flexion, extension, adduction, abduction, rotation, circumduction, and so on. And we'll go through what each of those terms means in a later video. Uh, the third type of joint you'll need to know um, of, of the synovial classification, the third type is a hinge joint. Um, and hinge joints enable flexion and extension, uh, where we, we close the angle of a joint or open the angle of a joint. Uh, and a really good example of that would be the knee joint. Uh, after this, we've got condyloid joints, condyloid joints. So a condyloid joint is similar in structure to a ball and socket joint in that the two, um, two ends of the bones fit into one another, but nowhere near as pronounced. Um, it's certainly not a ball shape on the end of it. It's uh, a curvature in one direction, um, concave and convex curvatures that sort of fit into one another to some extent. Uh, and a condyloid joint... A good example would be the joints between the metacarpals and the phalanges in the hand. Um, and they allow flexion and extension as well as some adduction and abduction. And similar um, to the saddle joint, which is the fifth uh, type of synovial joint, um, you, you find a saddle joint uh, between the, the uh, carpals and the metacarpals of the thumb. Uh, in particular, and again, allowing flexion and extension and some adduction and abduction as well. And the final, uh, the final type of synovial joint is what we call a gliding joint. So similar to some extent to a condyloid joint, except flatter in terms of the, the contact points. So not convex or concave uh, to any significant degree, but relatively flat um, joints that uh, ends to the joints where they meet, um, which allow sliding movements in, in slight different directions, just some small sliding movements. And a great example of gliding joints would be uh, several of the joints of the carpals, um, which, which have slight movements in various different directions and planes. So those are the six types of synovial joints. We've covered the three classifications. We've looked at synovial joints in particular, and then we've outlined the six types. Um, thanks for watching the video. I hope that's been helpful for you.